Welcome back to the Pick Up Korea podcast. And it's been quite a while, as everybody knows, there was the big pandemic and it really took a lot of people, you know, out of action. People were locked in, locked down. Uh, Korea itself really had the borders mostly closed for a lot of different um, citizens of people from Europe or uh, Canada. You know, it really blacklisted a lot of countries from entering. And even if you could enter, uh, there was a long quarantine. And so it really became very impractical to travel here. And so uh, a lot of people weren't able to come to Korea in the past couple of years. However, the good news is uh, as of April 1st this year, 2022, uh, the borders are back open. Um, pretty much all the countries, as far as I know, the countries like Canada and European countries that were blacklisted are now uh, able to come into Korea freely uh, on a tourist visa or by other means. And so a lot of people are emailing me these days about it. And um, as far as I know, as long as you have a vaccine uh, proof and a negative PCR test, you're good to go. So you can come into Korea. It's a really, really good time right now. Weather's amazing. We're in spring season here and uh, Korea itself is really pretty much lifted most of the restrictions. So for example, uh, during the past you know year or so, there was like a 9 p.m. curfew. There were limitations on how many people could meet. Right now it's midnight. However, they're getting rid of that uh, curfew, I believe, next week. So we're in April. By the time the end of April or uh, May rolls around, there will be no more curfews as far as I know. And there is a mask mandate, but the news says that it should be uh, lifted. So for outdoor masks, that should be lifted uh, relatively soon. So for the most part, you know, Korea is pretty much back to normal and quickly transitioning to pre-pandemic, you know, lifestyle and what have you. But uh, while there were a lot of people who took action during this uh, pandemic, many people, it was still possible to go out. You could still go out. Um, to bars until nine and the day game was always really good because a lot of people they're bored they're out walking around browsing shopping going to cafes so that never really ended you know a lot of <laughs> a lot of people were still going out every day still getting a lot of results however a lot of people uh ha the pandemic basically was a good excuse to sort of um you know not go out or it could have been productive some people actually did um kind of, what would you say, self-isolate or quarantine and work on, you know, some positive goals like starting an online business or getting into shape or some other personal life goals, which are really good. However, uh, now that everything's open, there really is no excuse. You know, Korea's open, the borders are open, the rules are dropped. And so now I'm noticing that a lot of guys are emailing me um, about coming to Korea, taking boot camps, taking immersion programs, and uh, previous clients who were uh, sort of taking it off or, you know, at least taking less action during the pandemic are now starting to go out again. But there's one thing, there's uh, those weasels keep coming back in, right? So they might be walking down the street. However, uh, today's gonna be the day, they say. Today I'm gonna restart, I'm gonna go out, I'm going to, uh, you know, go out to Gangnam for two hours or Hongdae walk the streets, approach a handful of girls, but guess what happens? They walk around, they say, ah, oh, today is not my day. I don't have the right t-shirt on, or I didn't go to the gym yet, or I, I'll start from tomorrow, or I, I don't know what to say or whatever. There's so many different excuses that come up, right? And so ultimately what will happen is if you've taken time off, you might have been getting some success or been doing okay, got yourself to a reasonable level. Um, in other words, you're able, you were able to go out, you were able to uh, get dates, you were able to um, close girls or get girlfriends or what have you, or one girlfriend that you liked. However, now that you come back, you're feeling rusty, the excuses take over and uh, you know, you keep saying tomorrow or you approach one or two and then you go home, right? And so that's really no way you're not going to get any better. You're not going to get any results that way at all. So uh, slowly getting back into it, 
there are a couple things that can help you. Number one, you shouldn't really judge yourself based on, shouldn't expect yourself to do very well if you've been taking a lot of time off during this pandemic. And um, you shouldn't really beat yourself up too much because basically, you know, have a very low expectation, realize that you're going to be rusty and it's going to take time to warm up. You know, your, uh, your muscle memory will eventually come back, but it's going to take a lot of uh, action, a lot of repetition and sort of getting that muscle memory back to what it was a year ago or two years ago or what have you. And um, of all things, really, right now, it is the best time. You know, all the girls are out. No one cares about Corona. Mini skirts are out. You know, they're dressing extremely sexy, even sexier than a year or two ago. And a lot of the girls are sort of pent up. They had been, uh, some of them had been not going out as much during the pandemic. And now everything's an excuse to go out. Nobody cares about the virus. Um, a lot of the previous bars and clubs that ended up getting shut down fully or went bankrupt during the pandemic are now reopened. Um, you know, there's festivals, there's the Han River Parks. There's just people walking up and down the street, just happy to be out and walk around and browse. So it really is ultimately the best time. And they, it feels like really there's a lot of like built up tension from these girls they're just really excited to be you know to go out and meet people so you really can't ask for a better time but that being said while they want to meet you it's you that's in the way right it's your excuses that keep coming up so that being said don't judge yourself don't have high expectations nonetheless you should make some goals for example uh, as i mentioned in previous blogs and the ebook you should time block you know for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to go out for two hours, minimal, and uh, I'm going to approach, uh, for example, 15 new girls, right? Something like that. And so that way you have uh, accountability, you have a clear uh, time that you're going to do this, kind of treating it like the gym, and you have clear, um, you know, approach goals. You have cl a clear, uh, a clear number or a clear... Um, goal that you're out to do and you have accountability. So for example, if you miss Monday, then you really got to make it Tuesday. And if you miss Tuesday, then you really, really got to go hard Wednesday and maybe four hours, go out for a really monster session of four hours, approach 30 to 40, right? And so it's the only way to really improve it in anything is to put in the time, put in the effort, have accountability and have a little bit of metrics, right? And, you know, later on, of course, you can work on improving your approaches, your verbal skills, your subcommunications, uh, your texting, your date process. However, initially just getting back into the swing of things, you really got to go out there and um, get that actual action in, right? And so, uh, yeah, stepping out of your own way. Um, one thing that you can do is go out with a friend. And uh, while I don't recommend always doing this, because what will happen is You'll only ever approach when you're with a friend, right? That's a thing I've talked about a lot. It's when you're with a friend, you can do it, but when you're alone on the way to the gym or at a cafe or you know, going out for a session alone, you can't do anything. So you never wanna be in that position. However, maybe every other time you go out, go out with a friend, or if you know, obviously if you get coaching, that's good because you get to not only do a lot of approaches, but you get to get feedback, refine your approaches and you should be a lot better off when you're out on your own. You have something to sort of, uh, you know, you have some adjustments to make. You have missions you're working on. Uh, you're more aware of your blind spots because I would be, you know, pointing those out, of course. And um, yeah, you should be on the right track there. So even recently, I'm working with a guy, uh, really having him take a lot of action. He had four dates last week, closed two of them and uh even pulled one same day uh i think it was the first approach of the day or second so that was really good and uh he really deserves uh you know he got a couple results last week really deserves it because he went out and took a lot of action and refining the process refining the process right you really really got to keep that up and so yeah really ultimately setting your goals not being in your own way and as your mind comes up with these excuses when you go out, you really just have to have your feet move quicker than your mind can. You have to take action quicker than the excuse can stop you, if that makes sense, right? So analogy I use a lot 
is, uh, you know, you might see the perfect style of girl walking across the street. Oh my God, amazing hair, tall, she's in high heels. You know, she has what they call an S line in Korea, like a full body, you know, really, uh, just really sexy. Your ideal type, however, you say, oh yeah, but I'm not feeling it. So consider that if, you know, consider that if you had a job interview and it's your ideal job, same situation, ideal payment, ideal job, ideal salary, ideal company, but you just skip the interview because you felt nervous or you had some kind of excuse. Most people would not do that, right? 99% of people. So it's the same thing when you see that ideal girl, even though you have nerves or even though you have excuses, you're still gonna go try you're still gonna go try to meet her and the worst thing that's gonna happen nothing you know she walks away she's not interested um, that's fine totally you know that's normal right These, that's her choice however you take a shot you might have a good interaction you might smile yourself and make her smile you might get her number might have a date with her and really everything's potential from there right and so yeah, going out this is very important to get yourself back in the hoop back in the swing of things. And uh, like I said, really now is the best time to come to Korea. We have, you know, uh, spring, we have summer coming up, really beautiful weather and all these restrictions have been lifted. So really overcoming these little obstacles in your mind is really should be the main goal. You should be going out there again. Um, one other thing, I've been getting some emails and messages about guys wanting to come to Korea, but sort of confused on where to stay and what area is the best area. So I do have some blogs on this, on the different areas. However, um, really the two main areas of Seoul that people tend to congregate are Gangnam and Hongdae. So you have the Gangnam district, the Gangnam station, like one of the biggest stations, biggest foot traffic. It's a modern, well-developed area. It's sort of the, uh, you know, uh, I guess like the Manhattan, it's fast paced, uh, a lot of volume. People really care about their appearance. There's a lot of beauty clinics here. It's a more affluent area, rich, tall buildings everywhere. And so this is one area that people tend to congregate. It's one of the main areas that uh, guys like to come, like to live here or stay here for a week or a month. And you just have you know, a massive amount of foot traffic, extremely attractive girls, and you have bars, um, few bars. You have some major clubs not that far away in, within the same district, within Gangnam District. And then you have Itaewon, which is not far away, which is one of the main sort of um, uh, bar hopping areas, lounges, bars, some clubs out there as well. Uh, one of the premier nightlife areas. And you also have Shinsa Apgajung Rodeo, which are the more posh, nice nightlife areas within Gangnam District, which you can walk and um, go to different lounges and bars as well, nightclubs as well. So yeah, Gangnam's a major one. You also have Hongdae, which is the major, uh, student area a lot of stu um, a lot of universities out there so you have a lot of students um decent english level however maybe less than itaewon which is the other nightlife area however <clears throat> it, it is good because you have all the different um a lot of different bars restaurants it's very walkable and uh it is a nice area to go check out as well uh there are you know some trade-offs to both areas so for example Gangnam, it's definitely more developed nicer more beautiful girls, um, however, slightly more expensive here and there for food or for accommodation, depending on if you're good at finding decent accommodation. When I say decent accommodation, I mean, you really should be looking for places closer to the major subway station. So uh, closer to Gangnam Station or Shinnongyan Station, you really wanna be around a major uh, station or Hongdae Station, Hongik University Station. And then, you know, obviously it has the amenities you need, right? And so if you look around Airbnb, um, uh, hotels.com, you should be able to find something reasonable. I'm, th I'm saying by reasonable, I mean probably like 50 to 80 US dollars per night. And even cheaper sometimes if you book longer, um, longer stays, you can get that long stay discount. And so on top of that, um, as I mentioned, for daytime, really, the major, major hubs are Gangnam and Hongdae. In the nighttime, both of those areas, and you have Itaewon. And what's, what's good about Gangnam, you have a quick uh, cab ride or a quick bus ride to Itaewon in like 10 minutes. From Hongdae, it's a little bit 
further, um, maybe 20, 25, something like that, but still accessible from both areas. So um, that's to keep in mind logistically. And you have a lot of other areas to stay, of course. You have, you know, there's a Gunguk University, Jamshil. Um, you could even stay in Itaewon, but the problem with that is in the daytime, it's kind of dead a lot less people out and it's a little bit more of a foreign vibe you don't really feel like you're in korea it's kind of weird to come all the way to korea and stay in that area i would say um it'd be like a korean person traveling to uh you know us and then staying in koreatown so it's kind of like not really getting the full experience right so uh anyways yeah those are my uh suggestions if you're planning to come over here and um also on top of that uh, now that everything has changed, one thing about Korea is it's a very trendy culture. It's a very, th things change very fast. Even before the coronavirus, the hottest clubs, the hottest bars, the hottest lounges, um, and what have you, they all really, uh, every six months, they kind of rotate, you know, something pops up, that's the best spot to be at. And maybe six months ago you were in Korea and you thought, oh yeah, that place might still be, you know, great. Like it would be in Vegas, like if you go to Las Vegas, you know, 2021, 2022, the, it's not going to be a big difference, right? There'll be new places, but still the usual suspects are probably going to be good. Whereas in Korea, really it changes very, very frequently. So uh, that being said, uh, I do plan on publishing some blogs and some posts about what areas and what um, current bars, current lounges, current clubs are good. However... I'll really have to keep that <laughs> chain. I mean, obviously with Corona, we were a lot closed down. Not only do you have Corona, but you also have, um, uh, not only have the pandemic that kind of shut a lot down, but you also have just the changing trends. So it would be something that would really need to be updated uh, every five to six months. Yeah, it wouldn't be valid even if you looked at, even if I published one now, probably by the end of the year, it'd be totally different. So. It is something, though, that I do plan on writing up uh, here soon and uh, publishing for those people who are uh, planning to come into Korea. And uh, on top of that, so yeah, a little bit about the venues, a little bit about, um, you know, logistical places to stay that could be very helpful. And then maybe changing that every six months for in a blog form or podcast form or what have you. So. You better better make sure you're updated better make sure you look at the latest post if you are interested in logistics and uh, current venues that are popular anyways on top of that um hope everybody's uh planning to come back to korea and really not making their excuses if they live here which a lot of the listeners do and they're planning on going out really holding yourself accountable uh really mixing it up you know going to your usual spots mixing it up with new spots and really uh, ultimately holding yourself accountable. And of course, uh, there's the Pick Up Korea ebook you can check out if you really want to get a background on uh, day game, night game, dating, uh, culture here. And uh, of course, you have coaching. You, there's custom coaching, the immersion program, a boot camp that'll really, you know, cut off and shave off a lot of your time that, you know, you, you could go out for a year and not figure any of this out and you could really shortcut your progress in a matter of a few days or weeks. So that's very, very, very useful. And as a lot of people realize when they come to Korea, it's not Europe, it's not Las Vegas, it's not Taiwan, it's not Thailand. There are a lot of differences that you really need to adjust for. And so um, you really only know once you're here, once you're actually taking action. So that being said, uh, good to have another podcast. It's been a while. Um, a lot of wild stories recently I could post. Uh, threesomes, uh, models with, you know, huge fake D tits, um, hostesses, room salon hostesses, the usual, you know, nurses and um, uh, company workers, department store workers, tattoo artists, just a mix of all kinds of different wild stories recently. But Maybe I can save that one for next time. So until next time.